Hello lovely people and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland and the start of yet another lockdown. So I should be doing quite a few new videos from now on. Um, this one's going to be in watercolour. I'm doing it from, again, from the first ever book I did, which was going on 30 years ago. This is the second print of it, reprint of it. The Art of Watercolour. And it's a very simple book, especially good for, for beginners, because there's lots of little tips and techniques in it as well. And I'm going to be doing one of the projects that's in here, and it's that one that I should be doing. That's the finished painting. But as you can see, it's staged by staged throughout the book, all the way back to the drawing. So, there we go. I will be changing it slightly because I can't bring myself to be, do, to be doing the same painting identical twice even if I could. So I'm going to start off with a drawing here and it necessitates reading glasses I'm afraid. It's a sign of age. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with the buildings. And like I said I'm going to change, change the whole thing slightly. So I'll have the building here. Going ever so slightly downwards that angle, that roof line, top roof line. A little bit there. And a bit on there. You're not seeing much of a building on this one to be honest. It's just really the tops of it. And a chimney in there. Top line of that kind of runs parallel with the roof line. Downwards there. And the chimney on there. Like I say, if if you, if you haven't got this book, get it, because it's a really handy little book. And if you're just starting out with watercolours, there's lots of tips and techniques in it for you. There's the base of the roof there. And you're just seeing a window through there. The pencil I'm using, screw fix. <laughs> a very well-known pencil manufacturer. Another good one is Ikea. And we've got a tree in there, bushy bit. And it's the whole overall feel of this is like autumnal. So I'm gonna to stick to the color theme and keep it autumnal, which is the right time of the year as well. Got another tree coming in here. Coming around there. And here I've got another building slightly higher. I'll make it slightly higher. That's the end of it. I don't like that angle, so I'll just redraw that. Look, don't panic. You don't need a rubber to paint over it. That's coming downward slightly there. And I'm going to tuck that in behind, actually. Like I say, I am changing this because I don't want to do the same identical painting twice. There's the end of the building there. Bit of wobbly roof there. And I've got a lean-to coming off of that. Coming down there. And a wobbly line there the base of the roof because it's corrugated. Bit at the end of that. And again, more bushes. Bushy bits. Lots of trees and bushy bits in this. And I'm going to retake the whole painting as well when I finish the drawing. Once I've got all the lines in that I want, then I'll edge it with the tape. At the base of this lot here, that's where the path, sorry, the path turns in. I don't like that. I'm 
we bring this in taller there. That's better. Yeah, I like that, okay now. Now on here, I've got a wall. Which I might actually stick some ivy on as well. We'll see. Grasses at the base of there, or grasses if you're from the north. Out of this one here, I've got a big tree coming up. Don't start drawing loads of twigs. Stick to the main boughs and the tree trunk. Any twigs that you're going to put in, you can do that with your paintbrush. Another one coming out here. And I'll be having autumnal coloured foliage on top of that. Bit of tree here. And now I can finish off that side. Now, I've generally just got bushy bits going on here. And I am pressing on harder with the pencil so that you can still see the pencil line. And here, a fairly big tree coming up. But even though this is fairly close up, and it's going to be the tallest one as well, once I get the foliage on, I'm still not messing around drawing twigs. You can see in the, in the painting, there's lots of twigs in there. I didn't draw any, I painted them on. Just stick to the main shape of the tree. Got another big bit coming out there. Big bit, another technical term. Lots of technical terms in this. <laughs> Most of which I make up as I go along. And as I said, on top of here, we'll have loads of foliage, but that's enough on that. Got a post there, which will be quite nice. And now here is where there's a field here, but I want to verge from in here. Then the verge goes off around there. And then we're gonna have this as plow. Now all I need to do, actually, I wouldn't ordinarily draw this in, but you wouldn't be able to see it then, what I'm going to do. This is just distant trees, woodland in the far distance. I'll just put that in there so you can see where it's gonna go. And a little bit through there. And now I'll retape it. Now stick a sky wash on and then we'll let this dry for a few minutes. Plenty of water oops, from the top coming all the way down. And I've just talked about taping on. Um, it's just normal masking tape. It's not too tacky and it's not too weak on the stick either. I know what I mean. The paper I'm using is the Lantern Rough, 140 pound weight. No piece stretching, no messing about with, just chop a sheet in half and take it to the board. And the first colors in here, I've got a little bit of, this time a little bit different now, raw sienna. Oops, I want it stronger than that. And a little bit of burnt sienna. Raw sienna, then burnt sienna. It starts off like an autumnal feel to the whole thing, even with this guy mopping up again. Now, ultramarine blue. These are Aquafine paints, by the way. Dale O'Rowney, Aquafine paints. Students' quality paints, but good and strong. Of course, these days, even students' quality paints in Dale O'Rowney have got natural pigment in them. Some natural pigment in them. Ultramarine blue there, and a touch of burnt sienna. 
bringing it down into the raw sienna. Bit of movement to that sky. And again, wash out. Squeeze out and mop it up. Get rid of that big grip down the path. Or as my mother used to say, get rid of that big grip. <laughs> and again, mopping up. I'll have a little bit more actually, a little bit more ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but this time a touch darker. lighter clouds wash out squeeze out forget the kitchen roll wash it out squeeze it out and suck some paint out for your clouds like I say I, I hate kitchen roll for clouds because it leaves a big hard white blob that you've just sucked out with a sharp edge doing it this way it's softer softer approach And again, just while I've got the time, while it's still wet, just move paint around a little bit. There. And now I'll just let that dry. Now, my sky's dried nicely. So, incidentally, have you noticed how much lighter it dries to when you put it on? It's always going to dry that much lighter. So, if you get it really dark and you think, oh, I've killed it, don't worry, it will dry that much lighter. Obviously, you don't want to be painting Apocalypse now, but if it's too dark, you think it's too dark, it probably isn't. What I've done now, I've changed my round brush. The sky one, I did sky wash it with my one and a half inch flat brush. These are, again, Dale Rowney Aquafine brushes. And they, these are the same brushes, I use the same, another set of the same brushes for my acrylics as well. They are watercolour brushes, but they're good sturdy brushes and they'll take a lot of good use. I've changed my number eight round now. And what I've got here, a little bit of ultramarine blue with a touch of light red into it. Ultramarine blue and light red. There, Plenty of water into this. And for the distant trees, all I'm doing, look, just drop those in there with the tip of the round brush. Carefully around my building. Just pop on. Dib dab dob. I'm doing it like this because I don't want a sharp edge on the top. That's not natural. Just have it wobbly. Have some wobbly bits in your trees. <laughs> I don't need to be too careful about that, but you can go around it easily enough. Actually, I've just said I don't need to be too careful about that, and I'm painting around it. But if you can't do that, you can paint through it. Look. I'll show you how to retrieve that again. Get the light back on that tree. Carrying on dabbing. And again, round the slot here. And paint through it. As I said, it's easy enough to miss it, but I just want to paint through it so I can show you a little tip. A little bit more of that over here. Carefully around the building again. And there, that's my background done, backdrop. You don't need to fiddle with stuff like that, a long way off. You don't need to be painting twigs in those trees. As I said, if I'd made a mistake and I'd painted through that, and I didn't want to, didn't mean to, or it was too difficult to paint around. Now, just wash out my three quarter inch brush and suck the paint back out, look. See? This business about watercolours, once you make a mistake, you can't put it right. It's a load of nonsense. Wash it out, do it again. Don't want to let it wrong. See? How easy is that? 
So never panic. If you think you've made a mistake, go over it. As I said earlier when I started this, I am going to change it. I don't want it identical to the one in the book, because I've already done that one. So this building, I'm going to leave white. The bit of building that you can see, I'm going to leave white. Now obviously, anything in shadow, white in shadow, have blue into it. But this time, I'm going to make it very dark. I've got ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. It's not quite black, which of course you can make with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Plenty of water into that, but I want it nice and dark. And I'm going to have that on the, this side. Again, round my bushy bits there. leave that for a second and I'll do the same here but a little bit weaker I've just taken by one quick touch of my smock I've taken enough paint off and now you'll realize that in this painting I've got the light coming from the left That side, I'm just going to leave white. But the chimney, I'll have that in a stony colour. So I've got raw umber and a touch of raw sienna into it. We'll have that on there, on that side. And now, in the same brush full of paint, a lot more water, so it's a lot weaker on that side. The roof, or roofs in this, I'm going to have as burnt sienna, just burnt sienna. Plenty of water in it to salt. I'm being careful not to touch that chimney because that's still sopping wet. And again, all done with my number eight round brush. As you know now, I could easily paint through that tree. But as I say, it's easy enough to miss. And the same one here. And just filling in. I'll put a little bit more detail onto this lot once it's dried. But for the time being, I still have blocked in. I have a little bit more of that on here, but this time I'm going to add a little bit of raw umber into the burnt sienna, so it's darker. Raw umber, as I always say, is the only brown I carry, both in watercolours and in acrylics. So I've got my raw umber as a nice standalone brown. If I put a touch of blue into my raw umber, I've got sepia. If I put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix, I've got Van Dyke brown. If I take my raw umber and burnt sienna together, I've got burnt umber. So I've got four different browns from one tube. Very versatile brown, raw umber. have a little bit of, into that mix I've just finished with, I'm going to put a touch of blue into that. There. And actually, <laughs> that's too much blue. Put some more brown in. And a bit more burnt sienna. That'll do. 
film is bit in here. Like so. There, that's the base coats of all the buildings. So. More water into that. Oh, it's lighter for there, look. To the light side of the building, I've got one window there. All I need, don't start painting window frames and sash windows and net curtains behind them. You need two or four little blobs in there, look. One, two, three, four. Got a window, simple as that. Now I'll have a little bit of light red, just light red. A little chimney pot. And that roof is still a bit wet, so I'll leave that for a second. In the meantime, I'll come over here, the hedge row behind here. And I'll start off with a little bit of raw sienna, this time with raw umber into it as well. So it's a lighter version. And I'm just dabbing on there, look. Like so. Here in there. Even though it's autumnal, I do want some greens as well. Not too many, but I do want some. So I've got a little bit of burnt sienna now. That's raw sienna, then burnt sienna. Which gives me half baked sienna. <laughs> oh God, I amuse myself. If no one else. A few touches in there. Don't want too much of that. Now, hook the screen and raw sienna. Hook the screen. Did I just say raw sienna? I meant burnt sienna. Plenty of water into that. Whilst this lot's still wet, dab in. And there's nothing wrong with leaving bits of white paper showing through here and there as well. Bringing that down to the top of the wall. Around the wall there. And all those undercoats are still wet. Let them spread together. Now I can go back to the buildings. And I've got here a little bit of ultramine blue, tiny touch of alizarin crimson, and a little bit of burnt sienna. The shadow is based on the blue of the sky, which of course was ultramine blue. And in the window, there, across the top, and down the left-hand side, Now, I want to make this a pantile roof, you know, wiggly, jiggly. <laughs> so instead of just putting a shadow line across there, push the brush upwards a little. Now, more water into that brush, smooth it down at the bottom. Now, let's have a few lines in here. Don't want solid unbroken lines. Broken lines are good. A few 
few lines on there as well. I mean, I've got my number four rigger brush in my bucket as well, so I could use that for this, for a finer line. But the tip of the number eight round brush is a very nice tip. And a few coming down here. You can see that that's still wet, but we're fine. And again, push that up at the base there. And flatten it down there. A little shadow on that edge there. And there would be a shadow cast on the chimney as well. There. How easy is that? Now, to this lot of bushy bits underneath, before I start these trees as well. So, I've got raw sienna with a tiny touch of raw umber into it. So I'm strengthening it ever so slightly. A bit there. A few bits around here, a bit there as well. Now, hook a screen. And we're also here. Give me a lighter green, you see. A bit of that in there as well. Let it merge into the raw sienna. Now bring that down a little bit. Again, just dabbing. Tapping, tapping, tapping all the way across. Carefully around my building. Now I've got a little bit of just burnt sienna. Remember that green was hooker's green and raw sienna. Now just burnt sienna. Bits of that in there as well. Again, as I say, nothing wrong with leaving some white paper showing through. That's adding to your light. And finally, in that lot, a touch of blue, just those marine blue. Plenty of water into there. Dabbing on again. I can hear seagulls outside. And then into that lot, a little bit of digital art. Digital art. Just smoothing in here. Now, for once, I'm going to my rigger brush. Number four, rigger brush. Flicky little bouncy brush, that one, lovely. And I'm gonna have ultramine blue and burnt sienna, almost black. Plenty of 
plenty of water into that brush. And all I'm doing, just filling in twiggy bits. Twiggy bits, there's another technical term. And you notice I'm leaving a little bit of light on the left hand side. light being the underpaper showing through. You don't want six million twigs. Remember it's going to be in foliage. So if you start painting millions of twigs now, you just wasted your time. Because any minute now, you're going to cover most of them up again. A few bits out of here. for twigs on that one. I'll go to this one now. And again, leaving a little bit of light on that left hand side. Now remember that shadow can mix I used? Blue, full screen blue, touch of crimson, touch of bird sienna. I'm going to use that again because this lot would cast a bit of shadow on that building there. So. Digital art on the bottom again. There. Now with my three quarter inch brush, I've got raw sienna. What I'm doing, don't start painting individual leaves. Look, raw sienna, scratch that on there like so with the side of my three quarter inch brush. Like so. Now a little bit of burnt sienna. In a similar manner. A few touches of that in there as well. Leaving the raw sienna mainly to this left hand side. And finally, a few touches of green and raw sienna. And that's our section done. Now again, looking around the painting, I just stood back for a minute or two there and I realised one thing I've missed. That building there would cast a shadow onto that one behind. I'm going to have a big dark shadow there, look. In there. Bring that down. There. That's better. I like that. Coming further forward now, into this wall here. And so I've got raw umber, it's a brick wall, raw umber and burnt sienna together. That'll give me a ready brick colour. Plenty of water into that and simply just fill that in with. Leaving a little bit of white, the underpaper showing on the top here and there just to help capture a little bit of light again. Like that. I was going to stick some ivy on that, but actually I'm quite happy with it as it is. I should put some brickwork in it in a minute once it's dried. Back to this bit here, and I've got some grass underneath those bushes. So I've got, again, Raw Sienna, it's there. Just a line across there, look. So that kind of like shows the edge between the bushes and where the ploughed field will come in. I'll have a little bit of that underneath there as well.
whilst I was doing that, that was drying. It's not quite dry, but I can still go in and do the bit of brickwork. So again, raw umber and burnt sienna. This time, not as much water into it. And with the tip of my round brush, look, all I'm doing is doing a few strokes here and there. Because it's still ever so slightly damp, they are going to soften a little bit. They're not going to be too sharp edged. Yeah. Just a few. Now, for the top of that, still the same colour. Going to have a few diagonal strokes there, though. leaving a bit of the white as well. got a post there. So just push that in there, but leave that side light, the underpaper. Now for the big tree. And in the big tree, I'm going to use my number eight round brush for the uh, tree trunk and everything. I'm starting off, I'm going to make it taller than I've actually drawn it now. I'm going to elongate some of those boughs. Raw sienna. Coming down here. So again, I'm getting my light to the left hand side. Now, raw umber with a touch of blue into it. Get my raw umber, touch of blue into that. See, nice and dark. Get that in to the right hand side of where I've just put the raw sienna. It will bleed in, but here and there, it will leave light bits as well. There, you can see it bleeding in there, but it's leaving those light bits to the left. All with the tip of my number eight round brush. Now, go for black, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. More or less equal quantities. Bit there, bit of that, bit of this, bit of that, bit of the other. There, there we go. I want too much water into that. And a few touches of that to the right hand side. I shall go in with my rigger brush as well in a second for the finer bits. But these are the bigger bits. And again, letting that run across into the other wet colours. Now, just with that black mix and my rigger brush, I'll go in and have a few twiggy bits. There you go, you see, much finer approach. And just wiggle that brush around a little bit. Have a few wiggly jiggly bits. is a flicky bouncy brush and people are scared of them. Don't hold it at the end and try and control it. Hold it further back. Let the thing flick and flick around on you. Create a more natural twig look. But as I said, I'm painting too many of those now. Don't need too many of them. Because now it's back to my big brush, my three quarter inch flat brush. So far I've used all four brushes and that's all I do use, four brushes. So again, back to a little bit of raw sienna. And with the side of that brush look, tapping. Just 
Dhabi Mall. Now, a little bit of burnt sienna, just like before, but everything's a little bit stronger. Burnt sienna into that pot. Tapping on again. Remember, leave some gaps. Otherwise you do end up with a lollipop on a stick if you're not careful. Leave gaps in your foliage. And again, hooker's green. This time burnt sienna, hooker's green and burnt sienna. If you remember last time over there, I used hooker's green and raw sienna. Green and burnt sienna into it. There. A little bit more water. And tap on a few bits of batter. You don't want the green taking over. Not for this season anyway. And a little bit of blue. All sounds odd putting blue into your trees, but it's not gonna come out bright blue because it's on top of the other colors. And have that mainly to the right hand side here. If I wanted some lighter areas in there, a bit of digital art, That's a very effective technique. And like all effective techniques, people go, God, that's good, I'll have some more of those. And you end up with no tree left, just a lot of taking out bits. Keep it to a few. And now for this little bit of ploughed field here. You only see a bit of it. And people worry about plough. It's dead easy. Put it in and take it out. Simple as that. Put your paint on, take them out, but in the right shape. So I'm starting off with a bit of raw sienna there. Bash that on there like that. Not like that, just like that. Now, a little bit of raw umber. Plenty of water into these mixes, by the way. And I'm using my three quarter pinch brush. A little bit of that in there as well. And now, to make it into black, you'll notice I'm not... Because I put that in first, I don't have to worry about the grasses here. You can imagine if I painted this bank here, grasses, sorry, grasses, I'd then have to paint this in very carefully. If I paint that in first, it doesn't matter what mess I make here, because I'm going to cover it up. So now, a clean damp brush, I've washed it out, look, wash out, squeeze out, and just take out. Wobbly plough. This field was ploughed after lunch. <laughs> but you notice, look, as I'm taking out, those lines are getting closer together as they go further away. Narrower up here than here. I'll leave that to dry for a second. In the meantime, I'll go to my track, the road. And I've got blue, ultramarine blue, of course, and a touch of light red. Plenty of water into that. And just lightly stroke across and it's fine to leave some bits of white paper showing and likewise like I said about the ploughed field if I stick the road in first I don't have to worry about these grasses if I stuck the grasses in first I then have to very carefully paint the road I'll let that dry for a second now it's time for the grasses either side of the track and so starting off get the light in first a little bit of Raw sienna in there, bringing that up to the top of there. A few bits. As you can see, I'm not being precious about this. I'm just bashing it on and I'm using my three quarter inch brush. Bit of that here as well. A few bits across the top there. Now, hooker's green and raw sienna, and some of that across here as well. 
bringing it into the raw sienna that I put on first, up to the base of the tree there. And as I keep saying, nothing wrong with leaving bits of white paper showing. It all added light to the picture by having some white paper showing. And a bit of that over here as well. Again, bringing it into the Morsier. And just bashing it on. All with that three quarter inch brush. Three quarter inch brushes are a lovely tool to have. You do so many things with them. And a little bit there. Now, I want some copper green and burnt sienna, so I'm making it darker. There's my green. This time, burnt sienna. A little bit of water. And in this lot, look, that's some flicky grass coming up like that. That edges it up to the field nicely. A few bits here. And a few bits in front of the road as well. Roughing it up a bit. Rough it up a bit. And the same over here, a little bit in front of the wall especially. Next to the tree. And a few touches up here. And nice and strong, a bit stronger as it comes down to the trap there. Now, all I need to do with that is let that dry for a couple of minutes and then put the final shadows in. There's quite a few of those. But I'll just give that a minute or two to dry. Okay, now a little bit of that shadow mix again. Before I tell you, can you remember it? Can you remember it? Based on the blue of his sky, always important. Ultramarine blue, in this case, touch of crimson, touch of burnt sienna. Bit of that, bit of that, and a bit of that. It's nice because, because of the crimson, it's got a warmth to it. Don't want too much water in that. And what I'm doing to start with, I'll have some from the wall. Coming down here, look. Put that. I don't want a big solid block of it. I want to leave some light shine as well. Now, a little bit more water into the same brush full of paint and stroke that into the wall. So that helps tie it down to the ground. I've got a little bit of shadow coming from that post. But the main important shadow here is from that tree. Whatever's casting the shadow, touch it with the shadow. Don't start your shadow here, because that's not that casting the shadow, that's just a dark line. Touch it, bring it down to the ground, and then bring your shadow out. Bring it down to the road, then across there. And now, dapple it a little bit by tapping on. Edge the path, path, where the grass, oh, sorry, where the grass comes down <laughs> to the path. That's dark for the moment, but it'll be fine. Just wait, wait a minute. I'll have a little bit in that corner there. And a little bit into the field there. A bit more water. Now, oops, 
Where I've just put that dark line there, what I need to do now with a clean damp brush, pull that in to the path a bit. Now all that needs to be done is to take that tape off. And there we go. Once you've got the tape off, that's when you get the feel of a finished painting. Don't forget the paper, the Langton Rough. It's only 140 pounds weight. And as you can see, there's no wobbling about with that, despite the amount of water I put on the sky. Um, and I don't need to pre-stretch it. I've only used four brushes in total because that's all I ever use. One and a half inch flat, number eight round, number four rigger and a three quarter inch flat. I only ever use four brushes, ever. Not just for this one, ever. Um, the paints I've used are Aquafine. The brushes are Aquafine. The paints I've used are Aquafine. There's my raw sienna, hope it's green, not blue. These are about one pound eighty, I think, on my, on my e-shop. So they're not expensive paints, but as you can see, they are good strong paints. So students' quality paints don't have to be wishy, weak and wishy-washy. And the book I used, I'm just thinking what I should be telling you now. The book I used is The Art of Watercolour. As you'll see from that book, I've changed that slightly. I've missed off a little bit over to the left. And I've missed off a couple of telegraph poles because I can't just be doing it exactly the same as the first one. Um, another book, especially for trees and stuff, is that one, Charlie's Pocket Book. A watercolorists. Lots of tips and techniques in there. A really handy little book. A lot of painters call it their painting bible. They keep it in their box all the time. So fabulous little book. Lots of tips and techniques. And the next one I'm going to be doing is an acrylic. So hope you enjoyed that. Give it a bash and I'll see you soon. Bye.